Thank you for already giving us your attention. And if you haven't already done so, please take a moment to silence your cell phone and put it away. Here to introduce today's presenter is North Cross alum, Bryson Ratler. Good morning, everyone. I'm so honored to be presenting Nadia this morning. I wish I could do the whole me and Nadia instantly clicked thing, but I'd be lying. After a year of getting to know each other in this through a blowards journalism class, I realized how hardworking, fun, caring, and genuine Nadia is. Hmm. Along with being my best friend, Nadia has also become my travel buddy. This summer, Nadia and I went to Argentina, and it was extremely impressive seeing Nadia communicate in Spanish so well. And as I struggled to form half of a sentence, Nadia was communicating so smoothly with everyone around us. I specifically remember when Nadia, Subi, and I were presenting about Roanoke and North Cross to the students in Argentina. Subi and I opted out of speaking in Spanish, but Nadia translated everything so well and made us Americans look really good. <laughs> Nadia has studied in multiple countries and has also been brought up by her amazing bilingual parents. The list of Nadia's qualifications for delivering the speech goes on and on, and I really couldn't think of anyone better to speak on the importance of bilingual education than my best friend, Nadia Hosting. <laughs> The definition of bilingualism, the ability to speak with fluency in two languages. The definition of bilingual education, the teaching of academic content in two languages, in a native and a second language. Bilingualism, in our modern day world, is a crucial tool often overlooked by humanity. Global statistics show that there are approximately 3.3 billion bilingual people around the world today, accounting for 43% of the population. Furthermore, another 17% of the world is said to be multilingual. This means that approximately half of the world can speak two or more languages with fluidity. Our world, which is constantly changing and modernizing, generally recognizes the necessity and benefits of bilingual education and bilingualism, but the United States seems to lag behind. While two-thirds of children in the world are bilingual, only about 20% of Americans speak a language other than English. Studies have proven that it is significantly easier to learn multiple languages at a younger age, and that the window for a child to easily do so closes around the age of six. I believe that if the United States wants to catch up with the rest of the world in this way, we must begin to take in bilingual education more seriously and enforcing it. A survey taken by 2,000 UK adults in October of 2021 Found that 36% of UK adults could speak one or more languages, to more than one language fluently. Putting this into large numbers, this means that there are around 25 million bilingual adults in the UK. According to the US Census Bureau, only 21.6% of people in the US speak a language other than English now. That's one in five adults. Mm -hmm. Bilingual education first became introduced to the United States in 1839 when Ohio became the first state to adopt a bilingual education law authorizing English-German instruction. Louisiana followed shortly after, authorizing English-French instruction, and the New Mexico Territory did so for English-Spanish instruction in 1850 as well. By the end of the 19th century, plenty of other states had passed similar laws. At the start of the 20th century, it was indicated by enrollment surveys that a minimum of 600,000 primary school students attending both private and public schools were being taught the German language both partially and in Spanish. This accounted for approximately 4% of all American students in, in elementary school, surpassing the current amount of students enrolled in Spanish-English programs in the present time. This all changed, though, during the World War era as politics interfered. Growing fears and doubts about the loyalty of non-English speakers, but specifically German-Americans, prompted several states to enact English-only instruction laws in order to Americanize these groups. Certain states even went to the extremes of banning the learning of foreign languages completely, However, this restriction was declared as unconstitutional and was overturned in 1923. Nonetheless, by the mid-1920s, bilingual schooling had been so widely restricted and unencouraged that it was largely dismantled. English-only instruction continued until the Bilingual Education Act of 1968, when most states began to enact bilingual laws of their own and unrestrict the teachings of foreign languages. Although since then, efforts have been made to advance language programs in, these, in schools, the United States has greatly lacked in producing bilingual students and students are able to speak and understand the language that they've been learning proficiently. Although languages as a subject are often overlooked and seen as less important subjects compared to subjects like math, English, and science, the benefits of learning a language are never ending. Studies have indicated a positive correlation between bilingualism and cognitive development. 
Research has shown that individuals who speak more than one language have better attention span, the amount of time in which one can concentrate and remain focused, creativity, the ability to generate new products and ideas, focus, the ability to give full attention to something, multitasking abilities, abilities to, switch, to task switch and do multiple things at once, and better memory, the power to retain and recall information. Bilingualism is also to have proven have to have enhanced academic achievement. Bilingual individuals have been proved, have proved to have excellent executive function skills. Executive function skills can be explained in many different ways, but in short, it's the ability to have self-control. To create and meet goals, juggle multiple tasks at once, and stay focused when interrupted. When learning and speaking in two languages at once, it forces the brain to resolve internal conflicts, which strengthens, which strengthens the cognitive muscles in the brain. Though this can be considered stressful, when introduced at such a young age, it becomes normalized and creates this crucial skill of being able to multitask and switch back and forth between things without losing focus. Also, it has been found that children who speak two or more languages receive higher scores on IQ tests. Aside from the cognitive and academic benefits, there's the ability to use this skill in real life situations. When traveling in a foreign country, being able to comprehend and speak the language spoken can be quite useful. It can keep you out of sticky situations, enhance your overall travel experience, and gives you the opportunity to connect with locals in the general culture. Language and culture are deeply intertwined. Bilingualism goes hand in hand with cultural understanding and sensitivity. When being able to speak the language of someone from another culture, it becomes so much easier to appreciate and learn their culture and customs. Language is a form of communication, but it's also a reflection of social norms, traditions, values, and history. Learning how to communicate and speak the language is the first step in the process of appreciating the culture. When engaging in a conversation, you begin to gain understanding of the intricacies of certain expressions, phrases, and idioms that make the culture unique. More importantly, language serves in the form of transfer of cultural knowledge and heritage. Though there are other ways to absorb such information, this is the most practical way to gain access to experiences, traditions, and stories that define a community and their values and beliefs. The connection you are able to create with someone is undoubtedly stronger when you show the desire to communicate with them through their language. Nelson Mandela said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his own language, that goes to his heart, end quote. Although many studies have proven bilingual schooling to be extremely beneficial, there have been many myths and, mis and misconceptions surrounding. The most common misconception is that learning two languages at once can confuse a child or delay language development in one of the languages. This theory has been proven wrong, as instead, bilingual children have to learn to process linguistic information in a different and more complex way, which allows them to then easily switch back and forth between each language. Another misconception is that bilingual children must be 100% fluent and equally proficient in the languages that they speak. Almost all bilingual, trilingual, and even multilingual people have a dominant language in which they're stronger in. Dominant proficiency in one language over the other has been observed to be affected due to the environment in which a person finds themselves in every day and the language that they use more often. Another huge benefit to bilingual schooling is the growing need for bilingualism in our globalized society. Globalization means a globalized economy, so bilingual employees are in high demand more and more every day. Not only will it improve your chances of finding a job and help you stand out as a candidate, but employees who are able to utilize this skill earn around 20% more than employees who only speak one language. It also creates the opportunity to travel and live abroad, which a lot of people seek in a career. According to a report done by New American Economy, over the past five years, the demand for bilingual workers in the United States has more than doubled. In 2010, there were roughly 240,000 job postings aimed at bilingual workers. By 2015, that figure had ballooned to approximately 630,000. John Feinblatt, chairman of the New American Economy, said, quote, in today's global economy, businesses require employees who can serve customers in a variety of languages. This research highlights the growing need to attract and promote a multilingual workforce among both foreign and US foreign talent, end quote. As of right now, the most desired languages able to be spoken in the workforce in the workforce are Chinese, Spanish, and Arabic. In the United States, it's noteworthy that some of the states are in higher need of bilingual workers than others. States like California, Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona seek employees both fluent in English and Spanish, as a large percentage of the population in these states consists of immigrants from Latin American countries. Now, here are some celebrities who have utilized their ability to speak multiple languages into their professions. 
Serena Williams, professional tennis player who has won 23 Grand Slam titles and multiple Olympic medals, is multilingual. She speaks English, French, Italian, and Spanish, and is known for giving her tournament address in the native language of the country she's competing. Shakira, one of Latin pop's biggest artists, is known for singing in both Spanish and English, but she's actually additionally fluent in Arabic, Catalan, Italian, and Portuguese. Kobe Bryant, who played for the Los Angeles Lakers, spoke Italian, English, and Spanish. He learned Italian while living in Italy for eight years, growing up as his father, a pro basketball player, moved them to Italy to play for the Italian league. While there, Kobe didn't pick up just one, but two languages. Now that I've mentioned these famous names that I'm sure you've all heard of, I want to get more personal. If you look around, you'll realize that a large chunk of the population at North Cross comes from our international program. These students, who we see as our classmates and friends, have worked incredibly hard to be here today, to live in the United States, to attend an English-speaking school. Every day, I am more and more impressed by not just their linguistic abilities, but their ability to adapt to our culture and customs. As I'm sure each case is different, I'm also sure that most of their success in their ability to speak English and communicate with us is because of bilingual education, which just reinforces my point that bilingual education around the world is, is very strong and extremely enforced. In conclusion, bilingual education creates endless benefits and opportunities and is becoming a necessity for our globalized and modernized world. By providing students with the possibility to learn and engage with multiple languages, bilingual education prepares students to navigate the world in different ways. In a time period where collaboration and communication between different cultures and communities is crucial, bilingual education emerges as the best way to connect and harmonize us all as one community. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> 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 